Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a foundation scheme using piled ground beams. I'm going to be speeding up certain parts of the video. For more detailed explanations and example videos on bits I speed over, please check them out after. I've left links to them in the description below. If you find this video useful, please consider liking and subscribing and also smashing the notification bell to get notified when I post my next video. Piled ground beams are very common and being able to scheme or design it efficiently is very important. So let's begin. In this two-storey building example, I only have access to the general arrangement floor plans for the ground floor, first floor and roof. This does happen when the architect only has the plans so far. So to start with, I'm going to be drawing a quick section through the building. I'm going to quickly go over the loadings. I won't be showing in too much detail how I derive the loads. If you need guidance on how to do a load takedown, please go watch the video I've done on it. I'll leave a link in the description below. Typically for beam and block floor on the ground floor, the dead load's going to be around four and a half, with a live load of two and a half for an office. And then at first floor for precast concrete planks, the dead load is typically going to be around five, and also office loading for live load is going to be about two and a half again. For the roof, I'm going to assume 1.5 kN per meter squared with a live load of 0.75. As this is a load bearing masonry building, the external wall is going to be 5.2 kN per meter squared. In this example, I am only going to be covering the load and design along grid line C. Here I am working out the line loads by multiplying the area loads by the trip length or the floor span. For a more detailed video, please go watch my load takedown video. Sometimes it can be hard to estimate a type or size of a pile in the early stages without any ground investigation. Typically there will be two phases of ground investigation. Phase 1 is typically known as an initial desk study and this is generally non-invasive so a site walk around and research into the history of the site. In the phase 1 report it should tell you the geology of the site and from this it should be quite obvious to see if the site needs piles or not. Thick bands of make ground or peat are good indicators. A phase 2 ground investigation is where they would be doing deep boreholes on site to get data for the pile design. In the report they may indicate what sort of piles would be suitable, such as CFA or precast driven piles. What the report probably won't tell you is what load capacity a pile can take, because generally piling design is done by a subcontractor. To get a pile design, you would send a phase 2 report to a few piling contractors and they would give you a type of pile and a capacity. Capacity is normally given as an axial force as a safe working load, so unfactored. Always check just in case. Also, if you know that you need shear resistance, ask for a shear capacity as well. In this example, I'm going to use a CFA pile with 300mm diameter with an axial capacity of 450 kN as a safe working load. To size the width of the ground beam, I use the general rules found in the green book which I talk about in my engineering books video. The book says that I need a minimum 150mm distance from the edge of any pile. So if my pile is 300mm diameters, then I need 150mm on both sides, so my minimum width of ground beam is 600mm. For the depth, I am tending to use my experience to just plug a number out. If after I do my analysis and calculations, I find that my depth is not enough, then I can increase it. For this example, I'm going to try 450mm as the depth for the ground beam. You want to space piles evenly to ensure no pile is overloaded. Just like scheming the superstructure, you want to place piles in the corners. After marking on the locations of the piles, I also show where the ground beams are going to be.
Now I'm going to draw an elevation of a portion of gridline C. I have spaced the piles evenly at approximately 4.1 meters. Because I've spaced these out at equal lengths, I can use the equations given to me in the red book or the structural engineer's pocket book. The red book gives me coefficients to use to work out the reactions and bending moments for a continuous beam of equal span. You need to remember that the piles are pinned and very rarely do you want to transfer moment into a pile. Here I am writing out the coefficients given to me in the red book. So say I need the reaction at position B, I just need to multiply the coefficient by the total load. I'll explain this shortly. So moment coefficients written under the beam between the supports are the sagging moment coefficients and the moment coefficients above the support are the moments for hogging moment. In the red book, to calculate the moment value, you need to multiply the coefficient by capital W and by L. To calculate the reaction value, you need to multiply the coefficient by capital W. Capital W is the total load, which is the line load in kilonewtons per meter multiplied by the span L. We need to make sure that we include the self weight of the ground beam to the dead load line load. Here I'm just going to be adding the dead and live load to get a total load of W. I'm going to be working out the reactions from A to D using the coefficients given to me in the red book. Now I'm going to be working out the moment values, but because calculating the reinforcement uses factored moment values, I need to factor the dead and live loads appropriately. I'm using Eurocode ultimate limit state combination factors, so multiply the dead loads by 1.35 and the live loads by 1.5. Once I've worked out the factored values, I can use the total load to calculate the moments. I'm 
going to do a very quick reinforced concrete beam design just to get some rough idea of what the reinforcement is and to see if my ground beam depth is appropriate or not. For a more in-depth example and guide for concrete beam design, please go watch my video. So to finish off a scheme, consider adding in some notes on your drawing such as stating the power size and capacity that you've assumed, any ground beam sizes and concrete grade and possible typical reinforcement. Mark clearly the piles so that someone can do a takeoff. Also state any assumptions and anything that needs clarifying later on. Thanks for watching. I know I have sped up certain bits because I have made other videos that goes into it already in more depth so make sure you check them out. I'll leave links to them in the description below. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.